now. There are other athletes in the pool, but you can't see him in the shot because that is superstar <laughs> American swimmer Katie Ledecky way out in front as a 12-year-old dominating the pool back then and 15 years later continuing to dominate and make history. Uh, this summer at the Paris Olympics, Ledecky became the most decorated female American Olympian of all time in any competition or sport and added a ninth gold medal to her collection. Ow! Yeah. <laughs> now Ledecky is out with a memoir, Just Add Water. It follows her journey from Bethesda, Maryland to become one of the greatest athletes of her generation. And Katie Ledecky joins us now. Katie, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So the book is, in a sense, already outdated because you've added all <laughs> <Yes>. these medals <laughs> in Paris that were not That's in so this true. volume. Yes. Uh, before we get into the content of the book and this incredible journey you've had, how has life been since Paris? It's been great. It's been a few weeks now, and I've gotten to spend some time with my family, with some friends. I've gotten to visit some extended family and just trying to soak it all in and enjoy, enjoy everything. What do you do to enjoy? Because in yeah. this book, it's very clear that you are hardcore. <laughs> you are hardcore when it comes to practice and competition. Seven so, days a week. She seven mm -hmm. days a week, yeah. many, many miles. Discipline, so, diligent. Yeah. But when, you, when you celebrate, what do you do? Well, I've been out of the water. I've only been in the pool, I think, four times. Uh, not for very long each time. So I'm enjoying a little bit of a break right now, enjoying some good food, again, some good family time, just traveling a lot, doing some things that I, I haven't been able to do because I am in the water constantly. For a lot of people, swimming is hard. Sometimes the water is scary. Uh, I went swimming this weekend. I was out of breath in like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you realized pretty early on that it's fun and there's something about the feeling that just really resonates with you. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I, I do really love the challenges of the sport, the challenges that the water presents. I talk about it in the book how after my very first race when I was six years old, I was kind of mini interviewed by my dad about how it was. And I said, it was, it was hard, you know, just trying hard. Um, but I had this big smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's still how it is for me. There are many days that are hard. There are many races that are challenging, but I, I love it. I love being with my teammates. I love setting goals for myself and pursuing them and, you know, sometimes achieving them. Yeah. No, because you said that, listen, it's, it's hard, but it's something that you really love. And you said that you are always your main competitor, which I found interesting. You don't look at anybody else but yourself. That sometimes when you're in the zone, you can actually hear your heartbeat and you don't share your goals with anybody. So if you're your main competitor, what is your next goal for you? What are you trying to beat of her? <laughs> well, I haven't set my next goal quite yet, but I know I will pretty soon. And what I love about the sport of swimming is that it is time-based. And so you can see your progress. You can see how... You know, you're getting better in practice day to day, how you're getting better in, in competition. The scoreboard doesn't lie. So you can really see that progress. That's what I loved when I first started swimming. As I talk about in the book, I set these goal times that I called want times. Yeah. I thought it was special calling them something different. And I, I love to do the math and calculate how far away I was from the goal or, or how much I beat it by. And, and Katie, when you're in the water, are you conscious of the time? Do you know what the clock is doing? Are you very that focused? You know exactly. Yeah, I've, I've been doing this for so long now. And as, as a distance swimmer, you do have to be very dialed in to your mm -hmm. pace. And so I can tell when I'm having a good swim and, uh -huh. and what kind of pace I'm holding. It's like a runner around the track, right? Mm -hmm. You know exactly where you are. Yep. Um, there are some people that have said, Katie Ledeckley swims like a man, or her stroke resembles that of male swimmers. Um, now, as a male athlete, I've always hated when they created parallels to compare male athletes to women in order to talk about a woman's greatness. I never liked that. And in your book, you acknowledge that these comments might not be malicious, but they should not be the yardstick for excellence. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, when I was kind of first coming onto the scene, I was swimming with a bit of a different stroke than a lot of the other female distance swimmers were swimming with. And I think that's really what made me so great, what, what kind of shot me onto the scene. I was doing something a little different. And so I hope that in the future, and, and maybe even today, people can say, oh, she swims like Katie Ledecky, or she has, right. she has Katie's stroke, um, because I, I kind of broke through with this kind of galloping stroke, um, swimming with a little bit of a different look than some of the other competitors I was swimming against. So uh, I, I hope that my stroke can be... Uh, Your stroke. My stroke. Not that of a male. Not of anyone else. I, I love Rowdy Gaines actually said that. So she doesn't, it's sports catcher, so she yes. doesn't swim, swim like a man. She right. swims like Katie Ledecky. Mm -hmm. I love that you tell the story about meeting Michael Phelps at six years old at a little swimmer. You go to get his autograph, and then years later, 
You're one of his teammates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I, I got I a high I got a high five from him in the ready room uh, when I was 15 at the at the Olympics in London. And at that moment, I just flashed back immediately to looking up at him, getting his autograph. He had his headphones in, but he stopped, and that made such an impact on me. We we're both from Maryland, yes. so there's something in the water in Maryland. And Damn right. It really yeah. is. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But, Although, well, we, a lot of athletes of all sports. 2028? I hope so. Do yeah. You want to. I, you I want would to. love to swim in LA. I think in Olympics in the United States, it's a unique opportunity. Not, a, not every athlete gets to compete yes. in an Olympics on home soil, so yeah. it would be special. Well, a lot of people around the world are hoping you're not going to be there, but <laughs> I think you will be. Katie Ledecky, thank you very much. The, the GOAT! The GOAT, just add water. Already the GOAT is available right now. Uh, if you'd like to hear more from Katie Ledecky, I will be chatting with her tomorrow at the 92nd Street Y right here in New York City. Awesome. The in-person tickets are sold out, but if you can hear my voice, you can still get tickets to watch online. It'll be almost just as good. All you got to do is head to 92ndny.org. Can't they just call you personally? Get yeah, I'll just put the, the cell number. I'll FaceTime you. Yeah.